I don't believe in accident. I believe in divine appointment. I was born into a devout Muslim home, and God had plans, wonderful plans. I've been there on the day I was going to kill myself. Jesus revealed himself to me, and he gave me a new life. And if you pray with me, and if you believe with me, God is going to give you a new life today. Jesus Christ is real. He changes life, he changes destiny, and he changes nations. And those nations can change the world. Dear friends, do you believe a person can change? Do you believe that? I used to not believe that anyone could change. Someone who is hateful, who is hostile to others, who is so much filled with bitterness, anger, unforgiveness. I used to think that such a person couldn't change. But God proved me that wrong. Because he started proving that wrong to me, changing me. An abused, angry, hostile Muslim woman who was full of bitterness, full of rage. He turned that woman into someone, someone completely different. Only Jesus Christ can do that. Only Messiah can do that. Only the son of the living God can do that. With one touch, with one touch, he can change you today as he changed me. And I want to talk about a man from the Bible, a man that, who was a bully, who was so angry and hateful towards people that didn't think like him, didn't believe like him, didn't walk like him. He wanted to kill them. He wanted to throw a lot of accusations about them and throwing threats at them. God touched him. We are going to talk about Paul today. I'm going to share his life story with my life story, if you allow me, and how God can change a life. Day and night, black and white. And I have seen many others like me have changed. And God is still working behind the scene. He is still changing lives. He is still changing people for his glory. Paul was a different man, was a different man before Damascus. And he was a different man after Damascus. He had a zeal, he had a fire for God, for his faith before Damascus. But that faith was a destroying faith, not building faith, not loving faith. But after Damascus, he had another kind of zeal. That zeal was building, loving, even suffering for Christ's sake. And he was a completely different man. I want you to imagine, imagine now that he was spreading with his behaviors, with his attitudes, with the things that he commanded. He was throwing all kinds of accusations and the slanders and the reports for people of Jesus Christ. People that walk with Christ, people that believe in Christ Jesus. He wanted to put them in prison. He wanted to make them suffer and torture them. Even Stephen, he saw him dying and he was giving his approval to be executed. That man was on the road of Damascus. He was going, he was going to a place to continue what he believed God called him to do. Dear friends, maybe today you are planning something in your lives. Maybe today you have a faith in something and the way that you express your faith, the way that you speak your faith, it's completely in different place than true God intended for you to be. In Acts 9, starting from 1 through 19, 
Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether man or woman, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. I like this part. I like to parse several parts here. One of them is the way. He was persecuting the people who belong to the way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, and this is a name, this is a title of my program, my TV program, to Turkey and all Turkey and Farsi speaking audiences in the world. The way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. No one can go to the Father except through me. He gave us the address. He gave us the map. He gave us the direction. How could we reach out to heaven? How we could find a way? How we could have an eternal salvation? And Paul was persecuting people of the way. I know people like that. I was one of them. Maybe many of you were wondering, how come someone can put bombs in their body and just die in the name of God? How come people can go into airplanes and hit the Twin Towers in America? How come people can do such things? I'm here to tell you today I understand because I was one of them. I would consider the biggest honor to die in the name of Allah. Because my God at that time was telling me to die for him. But then one day, one day in the scripture just it says suddenly on the day I was going to commit suicide at age 28, failed in every area of my life, divorced, failed in business, failed in life, family, everything, financially broke, and just was telling myself, life is not worth living. That day, Jesus Christ revealed himself to me in a wonderful way and change me forever suddenly when you plan to do something and you believe in something and you know that you know that you know that way is the truth then suddenly God comes and changes everything with one touch one touch Maybe you need that touch today in your lives. Maybe you need that touch, that kind of touch in your husband's life. Maybe you have been praying for so long to a wrong God for your family to be changed, for your health to be improved, for your children live decent and happy and peaceful lives. Maybe you have been seeing nothing, nothing has been happening. But today I am here to tell you from my own life and from Apostle Paul's life, God can suddenly change your spouse. God can suddenly change your children. Just trust in the one who can do that. I was believing God. I was thinking that he was the only way I was believing that if I died for him, for jihad, I could go to paradise. I was believing all those things. But then, suddenly, Jesus Christ touched me and showed me the way that Paul was 
persecuting the people of the way. I remember when I was in Turkey one day, I was sitting in my office and I had a magazine in my hand reading a Turkish very famous magazine. And in that magazine, in an article about missionaries in Turkey, and as I read how missionaries were spreading the gospel, spreading Bible and the truth in the Bible, at that time was a lie for me. I got filled with anger and rage. And I said to myself, I have to find them and I have to kill them in the name of Allah. I call many numbers to find about them and I could not. And today, today, because I believe in gospel, because I believe in Jesus Christ, many wants to do the same to me. But Bible says, Jesus Christ says, don't have fear. Don't have fear. Anyone that who can kill your body, who can take this temporary tent away from you. Afraid the one who can kill both body and the soul and be able to throw them both into the hell's fire. But this message is not about spreading fear. This message is not about telling people if you don't believe in this, which is the natural result of that, you will go to hell. But this message is you are loved so unconditionally. God loves you so much that he's not telling you to go die for him. He came and died for you. My Muslim friend, this is different. Here is completely opposite. If God loves you. If true God loves you, if someone tells you, I love you, will they die for you? Or will they ask you to die for them? Here, you need to ask this question. My boss led me to the Lord, Jesus Christ. I accepted him with a prayer into my heart. As I said on the day I was going to end my life, I was a single mother. I had a three-year-old girl at that time. This, that girl is a grown-up girl today serving Jesus Christ. But at that time, everything looked so dark. I was in despair and I thought, nothing, nothing can change my circumstances. I thought, nothing can change my life. And I know someone like that. Uh, my husband, he was a gang member in the, near, in the streets of New York City. He was a gang member. He was a very pretty scary guy. Imagine, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chooses the thing that mean nothing to other people. He doesn't look at people's resumes, CVs, diplomas. He doesn't look at people's even gifts and natural talents, he doesn't look any of them. And he takes a someone broken like me or my husband, a gang member, does nothing but bullying others, doing nothing but hurting other people, including his family. But on the day he was dying because of poisoning, he said to the Lord, First time he called out the name of the Lord. He has a name. Our God has a name, Jesus Christ. He says, Jesus, I am failing in this life. Help me. This is sometimes it takes one single prayer. Help me, God. Show me your way. I want to know you. If what this woman is saying true, show me. Am I walking in the right path? Is this path going to save me at the end of my life? Is this path going to take me to your presence when I die? Ask him because I did. And I believe with all my heart, if you ask him, my Jewish Hindu friend, my Muslim friend, Jesus Christ, I believe, is going to reveal himself to you as he did for me and for my husband. 
And God touched him that day. When he reached out to God and said, help me, God. Help me. I am failing in this life. And Jesus touched him and changed him completely. Then we started doing street ministry after we got married together. I remember going and sharing the good news. It is good news to people on the street, prostitutes. Maybe the people that you think they never can deserve to go to heaven. Maybe those to the people groups that you think they don't deserve to be in God's presence. They are filthy, dirty, wicked, even disgusting. Drug dealers, abusers, murderers, you want to name it. And it can go on and on and on. And I remember going on the street and talking with them. And there are some will always look at you if you are crazy, as if you lost your mind. Message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is foolishness to those when you say, I believe in God. It is foolishness, it's stupid to people when you say, Holy Spirit speaks to me. God speaks to me. It is stupid. But when you know, when you experience God, you know, you know that you hear his voice. You know that he is leading you, guiding you, comforting you, and changing you. We have seen many lives Many lives have changed. And one of them, I want to tell you, we went to a very high secure prison to do a ministry, to share the gospel with 150 prisoners. Amongst that group, rapists, yes, rapists, murderers, thieves, drug dealers, woman beaters, you just name it. And we went and we started sharing on forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Is there any people group today that you think that they shouldn't be forgiven? Or is there anyone in your life that you cannot forgive? I want to ask you, can you say someone, I love you unconditionally? I love you unconditionally. Then say to the same person, I cannot forgive this. No, unconditional love entitles unconditional forgiveness. If you love someone no matter, you forgive them no matter. Anyone turns to Christ Jesus and ask him with a prayer, with a sincere pray prayer, and invite him into his or her heart and acknowledge his sins and repent from his or her ways, God will make him a new person. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I love this, and I always shout this, I am crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. I am crucified with him. When, I, when you believe in Christ Jesus, when you give your life to him, you are not that murderer anymore. You are not that abuser anymore. You are a complete new person in Christ Jesus. Yes, not everybody changes day and night. There are some changes and it's a progress. I say I'm still under construction. God is still changing me. But the majority of the old self is crucified, buried, put to death the moment you accept Jesus Christ into your life. He went to the cross for you, for me. He shed his blood for you and me so we could have eternal life. So it will be forgiveness, remission 
of our, our sins. He paid the ransom. And then on the third day, he rose again. He conquered the death. So you and me can have eternal life through accepting him into our hearts. My friend, it's a simple message. Jesus was a simple man. And he said it in a simple way. I am the way. Simple. I am the truth. Simple. I am the life. Simple. No one goes to the Father except through me. Simple. Sometimes we make it complicated. We make it more than what it is. And then when we went to that prison, my husband started speaking and giving his testimony how Jesus Christ changed him. And we saw at least 100 men out of 150 came forward weeping like babies, like little lambs. Those are the men, maybe the most dangerous men that you, you wouldn't want to see them anywhere. If you saw them maybe on the on street walking, you would change your way. They were a scary group of people. They were maybe capable of doing anything, any crime, without blinking their eyes. But suddenly, but with God, all things are possible. And that day, God touched them in a marvelous way, and they were weeping. And one of them came forward who already gave his life to Jesus Christ to share his testimony to encourage the other 50. And he said, when we were going to prison to minister, we could not ask people, why are you here? This was one of the rules of the prison. You cannot ask them, why, why are you here? But this man came and he asked our permission to speak and we gave him a permission. We knew that he was a believer. And he said, I had seven life sentences they were asking for me, he said. Seven. And I had nothing, nothing to prove I was innocent. But I was part of it. I was part of the crime. And he didn't say what it was. But everybody was telling me, there is no hope, no hope for you. And I believe that, he said. And I decided to end my life, he said. And I was planning and I was contemplating how I could do that. How I could end my life. And one day I decided to hang myself in my prison cell. I was alone. I was crying. I was bitter. He said, that moment, a minister of a gospel. I didn't inquire, he said. I didn't ask for it. Came to my prison cell. And he said, can I talk to you about something? And I said no to him. I didn't want your gospel. I know what you are going to tell me. But he insisted. He said, do you know God loves you? And I laugh at him. <laughs> God loves me? Someone like me? Do you know who I am? Do you have any idea what kind of criminal I am? And man with the Bible in his hand said, doesn't matter. God loves you. He died for you. And whatever you have ever committed all together and multiply it with world's population, he died for all those sins. And he said there was a glimpse of hope. There was something in his voice. At that moment, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel, he said. And I surrendered my life to Christ. And I, he said, it doesn't matter now. If I died at that moment, naturally, or they took me to execute me, I deserve it, he said. I deserve it, but I changed my mind about ending my life. 
I, had, I was a new person. And I waited for my, to be sentenced for five years in prison, he said. And last week, I went to the courtroom. I was in front of the judge. And he canceled, because of lack of evidence, all the things that they were asking. And he said, I am giving you five years. Five years only. And I already served that five years. I have two months to go. But I can tell you after that, two more months, I will be sharing the word of God with people. He came forward and he said, now you, 50 men, 40, 50, whatever. God knows your numbers. He knows your names. He knows your crimes and sins. Now, this message is not a message that you believe in Christ Jesus. You're going to be set free from prison today. You are going to be a free man out of the bars today. But this is a message that you will be free no matter where you are. You can be in prison and you can be a free man. Let me tell you, my friend, I have been to prisons many times and I have seen prisoners who gave their lives to Jesus Christ and they are more free than many people that I know in the world, that they are addicted to drugs, they are addicted to pornography, they are addicted to killing, stealing, hurting. Those are the true prisoners. And I want to tell you today, I want to invite you, if today you say, you just say, Jesus, Jesus, I need your touch today. I am a sinner and I hate this life. I love you, Lord. And I am inviting you into my heart. Forgive me, Jesus. I believe you die on the cross for my sins. And I believe you rose again on the third day. And I am inviting you. I am saying yes to you, Jesus Christ. Come and live inside of me. If you say this prayer today, you will be safe. And death has no power in your life.